What's going on guys, Dr. Brute 7 signing in back with another tutorial and demonstration video of another custom firmware for our Anbernic devices. For this video I'll be using the RG35XXH model. This will be a quick and easy to follow guide where I'll help you guys to install the custom firmware along with some essential tweakings that will elevate your custom firmware experience. My overall experience with this custom firmware has been quite pleasant, starting with the UI which has a very straightforward and simple view nothing fancy. Now what is Moo OS? It relies heavily on the use of RetroArch. Now keep in mind the people behind this custom firmware is constantly improving the software so expect changes to happen quite often which means sometimes you might have to reflash the custom firmware if it's required in order to apply the updates. Almost all the emulators runs pretty well. I did notice that the PSP performance is not quite bad with a bit of tweaking and this is without applying any FPS cheat. There is also another feature which I really liked, the sleep mode shutdown feature which basically puts the console on sleep mode and performs a quick save. If kept on sleep mode for a certain time which can be set, it suspends everything and shuts down the system. And next time when you're gonna turn on the device is going to quick load the last game you are playing. You can resume the gameplay exactly from the last point. I'll show you how to do that shortly. Keep in mind, it might not work for all the games, specifically for Portmaster games. Okay, so we're going to start with the installation process of the custom firmware Moo OS. You're gonna go to the link in the description. The current release version, as I have mentioned, is refried beans and also baked beans update is available as well. You need to have refried beans installed before you can perform the update. With that thing out of the way, you're gonna first click on this this link the one that says refried beans is going to take you to the next page which should be this one and you're going to click on it it's going to take you to the download section you have the different models which is rg28xx rg35xx the original model and you have the very last one which is for the xxh plus and the rg35xx 2024 model which is the latest model now download the version which suits your device and you're going to get a rare file i already extracted the rare file here you're going to get a folder since this is a fresh installation we don't have to do any kind of backups or anything like that what you're going to need is a software to flash it i have win32 disk imager now if you want to use any kind of different software you are free to do so let's browse for the image file which is this one okay select the image file you're going to write it right into a physical device okay and then we're gonna select the proper drive it's already selected for me it's d drive and then we're gonna hit on right just hit on continue we're done with the flashing process we have mu os successfully flashed onto our sd card all right let's just eject the sd card real quick and we're going to be inserting it into our devices just insert my sd card into the tf slot one there you go. So after the device boots up, we're going to have to select our device type. So select your device type. Mine is RG35XXH. Press A to confirm. We're going to select our time zone. After the initialization process has been done, you're going to see a couple of credits and the of the devs and everyone. Once you're past that screen, you're going to be met with this screen, the main menu. The main menu looks very minimalistic and very nice. I really like the look. Before we take out our SD cards and put it into our computer, do the setup process, we're going to do a little bit of tweaking real quick. That is going to help us on the later section of the video. So let's head over to the configuration. Press Press on A, General Settings, and here we're gonna look for Sleep Shutdown. You can put the console on sleep mode mid-game and it's going to stop everything at that very point, quick save the game, and then just put it in sleep mode. And also, if it's kept on sleep mode for too long, it's going to just shut down. So I think this is a very cool feature. You can cycle between the timings. I'm gonna keep it to 10 seconds. So the settings gets automatically saved the moment you exit out of the menu by pressing the B button. And there you go. We're not quite done yet. We need to set another thing. Just head over to configuration, general settings, and the third option that says device startup and set it to last game. Back out by pressing B 
and it's going to save the settings whoa whoa wait hold on just one more step i promise this is the last step and you'll be all set after this just head over to applications and go to retroarch head over to settings saving and from there you're just going to enable auto save state and auto load state and then head back into the settings and over to the main menu select configuration file save current configuration and just quit now you're all set for the sleep shutdown feature however it does come with certain disadvantages and i'm gonna be talking about that in a little bit we're gonna set up the wi-fi real quick in order to do that just press on x to scan for any kind of wi-fi networks okay and we're gonna select our wi-fi and we're just gonna put in the password real quick all right so we are connected to our wi-fi now we also have a theme section from where you can select a range of themes and also there is a theme database you're gonna have to join their discord server so i'm gonna put the link in the description or maybe i'll just make a separate video exploring all the set of themes now we're just gonna set up our memory card by transferring the essential files and folders. You're going to see your drive partition show up, but just in case if it does not show up, you're gonna head over into the search bar and type in disk management, head over to disk manager, and you're going to see your disk partition somewhere here that will say ROMs. It just doesn't have the assigned drive, so you're gonna have to just assign a drive letter by right clicking on it, add a path, and it's just gonna show up just like this. All right, this is the root of our SD card. This is the system files. Here we are going to get any kind of backup files if we back them up. And there is the archive folder. We have a use for that. I'm gonna get to that later. Let's just set up the BIOS files. So in order to set up the BIOS files, you're gonna head over into the Moo OS folder and you're gonna find a subfolder that says BIOS. You're going to transfer all of the BIOS files into this subfolder. Do not ask me where to acquire the BIOS files. From legality issues, I do not wanna get my channel into more trouble than it already is. The same goes for the ROMs. Do not ask me where to gather the ROM files from. If you want to transfer any kind of ROM files, place them inside the ROMs folder, which already gets created, can be found on the root of the SD card. Unlike Batocera, there is no pre-created folders. MooOS is a free flow custom firmware. It gives you the liberty to set up your ROM files according to your liking. So you can create subfolders based on the genres of the games or anything like that you can organize them according to your liking and moo os is going to just detect the rom files regardless you're gonna have to create your own folders based on the specific systems like this and just transfer the rom files over there zip or archived formats roms works properly you do not have to worry about that so yeah there's that this is how you set up the bios and the rom files for your device all the contents are going to show up under the explore content section from the main menu let's take a look at the main menu real quick so first we have the explore content this is where you're going to find all your platform specific roms next we have favorites under the favorite section you would be able to assign your favorite games yeah, i haven't seen any search option that would allow you to search from the list of games that you have added to supplement that just look for the game i know this is going to be a pain in the ass however this is what we need to work with just select the game of your choice that you would want to play from time to time add it as your favorite select the game and hit on y it will show up under the favorite section history is basically where it's going to show the list of the games that you have played under applications there is portmaster that is for a later video retro arc they have also added archive manager through archive manager you'd be able to update perform any kind of system update if you have made any kind of backups like save backups or anything like that you'd be able to extract them through archive manager the archive manager is going to do all the work there is also a music player i haven't used the music player but uh, if you want to exit out of the music player press and hold the L2 button and press the start key. Under task toolkit, you'd be able to back up everything, your config saves, you can clear history, clear system cache, 
system configuration and a whole lot of things there is also configuration where there is like general settings you can change the brightness you can change the color temperature hdmi output i did hear that there is a glitch on the hdmi output feature which will make the custom firmware crash and you're gonna have to reflash your entire custom firmware so i haven't tried out the hdmi output maybe just look into some forums or something like that you can also reboot your system or shut down completely shut down your system one of the disadvantages of this custom firmware is that there is no box art you won't be able to scrape for box art maybe in the future updates we're going to be getting it in order to add in box art you're gonna have to add them manually there is an alternative method a really cool guy who is a part of the community has compiled all the box art and screenshots together archived it into a zip file which i'll be linking in the description so this here is the github for the box art you're going to download the zip file and then connect your sd card head over into the archives folder and place it over there head over into applications archive manager is going to show up as this. The name of the zip file should be TBS Artwork Complete. Now all you have to do is just hit on A. It's going to unzip and extract the box art, cover art and all the other screenshots and everything of the games. But the names needs to match with the ROMs. So basically both the ROMs and the cover pictures names should match otherwise they won't show up now that's one of the issues that i'm facing not all of the box arts are showing up if you can live without the box arts or cover arts then that's totally fine it's totally something that i can wait out till they add the scraping feature into this custom firmware all right let's talk about some of the hotkeys that will come in handy while you're using the custom firmware let's first start with increasing the brightness you're gonna have to press and hold the f button over here which is at the top and then the volume up or down button will increase or decrease the brightness in order to put the console on sleep mode you just have to press and hold the power button for two seconds turn the console back on let's talk about selecting cores for the very first time when you're going to run any particular platforms game it will ask you to select the specific platform followed by assigning a core that only happens once but for any reason you want to change the cores all you have to do is just press the select button and it's going to ask you to assign the console again so on this screen you're gonna have to select say a mega drive for me and then we have three cores you can just select your desired core and then it will run the game if you want to bring up the retro arc menu press and hold the f button and tap the x button it will bring up the retro arc quick menu if you want to quit out of a game with the f button pressed tap on the start button save state and load states are assigned to l2 and r2 with the f button pressed and held that's about it with the quick handy hot keys all right so here's the thing if you select the wrong core by any chance and then you end up getting a black screen and you restart your system you're gonna be stuck on the boot logo just like this so this basically happened when i was trying out the arcade emulator course and then i just ended up selecting a wrong core now, there is a fix for that now this is one of the issues with the sleep shutdown feature if you select the wrong core you might face that despite several attempts i wasn't able to figure it out i looked at several forums and there weren't any and, and the possible solution was if you're stuck on the boot logo you will have to reflash the custom firmware so basically you have to do everything from scratch that is the last resort so i was not looking forward to it and it took me a whole lot of tinkering and i figured it out removing the save states won't work neither will removing the config file so the only way is first you have to remember which wrong core you have selected then you're gonna head over into the core folder which can be found inside the muos folder then you're gonna look for that core that you have selected and you're gonna have to remove all of the cores that relates to that core so my wrongly selected core was MAME so I had to look for all the SO files that are related to MAME and I had to remove them once you remove them you'd be able to boot up into the custom firmware so I'm just gonna do a quick demonstration let's insert the memory card real quick and start the system There you go. 
we just booted into the custom firmware. This is how you resolve the issue related to selecting the wrong core. Obviously, you're going to need those cores back. What I would suggest is disabling the sleep shutdown feature and just copy back the cores. So here, I'll just select the device startup to main menu and head over into applications, retroarch, settings, saving. We're just gonna disable the auto save state and auto load state and obviously we need to save the configuration done and quit all right so let's just shut down the system real quick insert back your memory cards transfer back the removed core files back into your course folder so head over into move os core and just transfer them back let's reinsert it real quick and here's hoping for the best there you go easy as that issue resolved okay time for some game testings
Eh, not good. Let's talk about one of my most favorite settings that can be set up through RetroArch, the rewind feature. We're gonna set that up real quick. Head over into applications from your custom farmers live area. Look for RetroArch. After running RetroArch, head over into settings. Look for frame throttle and the very first option under frame throttle that says rewind, you're just gonna toggle it on. So rewind support should be on. After that, head back into the settings menu. Look for input. Head over into input, under input, head over into hotkeys. This is where we can assign several emulation related keys combination. So for rewind, I have assigned button seven. In order to assign any kind of button, just press on A and then long press the button that you would want to assign. All of these features, emulation features can be activated by pressing and holding the F key along with the assigned hotkey. After tweaking those settings, head back into RetroArch's main menu, head over into configuration file, save current configuration. If you do not do this, it's not going to save the settings. All right, after this, you are safe to quit. From this point onwards, you would be able to make use of the rewind feature. I've just used the rewind feature. I hope Dahaka is not peeping through the corner. You know what I'm saying? This is one of my most favorite emulation feature, godsend feature, because man, I have the opportunity to rectify my mistakes. If only I could do this in real life, then I could rewind myself and not meet some pieces of shit and make my life better. All right, my current impression on Moo OS is it's still buffering there's a whole lot of features that are missing and a whole lot of catching up that needs to be done there's no way to scrape which is a bummer not the end of the world for me but i can totally get it if users are going to get steamed up for the lack of this feature because when it comes to nostalgia these box arts they add into the emotion even though there is a manual way of adding them but it's not the most convenient and the alternative method thanks to antic but it doesn't work properly unless certain conditions are met while i do love the minimal nature of the firmware very essential for limited hardware devices like this one i'm using the less pressure on the memory the better the sleep shutdown feature is pretty nice until you mess it up in terms of emulation experience right after install there is some work that needs to be put on, especially for the PlayStation 1 emulation. Stock firmware is still the best for me when it comes to out-of-the-box experience. Batocera doesn't need any configuration till PS1, while Moo OS needs to be configured, starting from PlayStation 1 emulation. At least for me it is. You could see it during the game testing section. However, there is one thing this custom firmware excels in, but that's for another video. Let's just keep it at this for now. If you have enjoyed the video, make sure to drop in a like and subscribe. Don't forget to mention which custom firmware do you like the most or do you like to just stick to the basics with the stock OS. Mention it in the comments, drop in and say hi while I live stream. I'll be seeing you guys on the next one. Dr. Brute 7 signing off. Peace.